You guys remember where we left off. We just got done sheathing this wall right here. We got a couple of pieces up. And we're ready to start framing the dividing walls that's going to contain our washing machine closet. So we're going to make a little washer closet right over here. Now before I do that, before I start building walls on the floor, I have to add window screen to the floor. This is going to be a screened porch and something that Ashley, my wife, wanted was that no bugs could get into it, no spiders especially, no cockroaches, nothing like that. And now on the porch floor we wanted to lay deck boards. It wasn't our first choice but there's not many options out there. So with that in mind the deck boards are going to be gapped. Even if we don't want them gapped they're going to shrink and they're going to gap. And we don't want all those wide cracks letting bugs into our clean screened porch. So the answer to that, the solution, is window screen. We're going to lay it down on the joists before putting the deck down. And it's going to stop any bugs from coming up. Is it going to collect dust and debris and dirt? Probably. It's just something we'll have to deal with. There's not many options. And this is the method that most professionals would use. So that's what we're going to do. So this just gets stapled down. And then once the wood is down, it's not going anywhere. Ideally, it goes right under the decking. You don't want it on the bottom of the joists, on the underside or anything like that. Because if it's close to the surface, if it's right under those deck boards, you can vacuum your floor and it'll suck any of the dirt up that's in the cracks. So I'm not really worried about that. Anyway, that's the backstory. That's what we're doing. Let me get this stapled down. Then we'll get a wall up. Make a little bit of progress today. That's nice. Nice and square and tight. I like it. I want to point out something. I'm using 3 8 inch staples here. Oop, lost them. Now, but these staples are special because these are made of stainless steel. You can get galvanized staples that are just steel, or you can get stainless steel. I'm using stainless steel in this because treated lumber, like this, is treated with a copper treatment. And the copper in the wood will react with steel and cause it to rust. So steel staple, regular steel staples, the cheap staples, they're just going to rust very quickly in here and degrade and just not last long. Using stainless steel staples means that these staples should last forever and they won't corrode the same way as the cheap ones do. They're only a few dollars more, it's worth doing. Now, once the boards are on here, those staples will be almost pointless because the wood will be holding it down. It's going to be all screwed through there and everything. You don't have to worry too much. If you use cheap staples, it's fine. But they are going to be rusting and falling apart underneath your boards. I just don't want that. Now that one screen is enough for now for me to get my first wall in. So I'm going to do that. And I happen to have it right here. I built this yesterday, but I have not test fit it. And it's an angled wall, so I just hope it works. Because, you know, obviously. Okay, well, I took it back out. Truth be told, I wasn't happy with it. It's too tight of a fit. I just made it a hair too tall. So what I'm going to do is take off the bottom, trim off all the bottom boards, put the bottom plate back on, and just shorten the wall up a little bit. I just don't want it that tight that it's pushing down and uh, making the floor sag or something. So I'll get working on that. It's not always perfect. Well, I struggled through that, but I think I got the wall shorter. The problem I had was this screen gave me no, like, 
I couldn't slide the wall where I needed it without pulling the screen. It really made putting this in tricky. Now I have to build another wall, and that's gonna be right here. A lot of people misunderstood our design when we said we're putting the washing machine out here. They assumed, naturally, that it would be facing this way so that the washing machine would be raised up here when you were standing down here. Actually, that was part of my original design was the washing machine facing out this way, but what we decided is to face it that way. So the washing machine is gonna be actually in a closet right here. And this is the face of it. No, the reason I'm doing it that way is preference. Now living in Florida gives us a lot more flexibility with our design process. We have the option to put our washing machine and our water heater out on a porch instead of in the house. It gives us more room in the house and it's actually better because if the water heater or the washing machine ever springs a leak, it's gonna go right down through the floorboards. They're all gonna be pressure treated. It's not gonna be a problem. No water damage in the house. I like that. That's why we decided to put them out here. So let me show you right here, that closet, that opening is where the water heater is going to be. So we're gonna put a door there, water heater closet. Now over here, behind that wall is the washing machine facing that way toward the living space. You'll see it straight out. This space is fully framed out now. I don't think I have to do any more framing except for replacing more studs in that wall, you know, just straightening them up and uh, lining them up on 16 inch centers. But as far as like framing, wall framing, it's pretty much done. The only thing that might come is I need to put a, a header across the top of that doorway there. I just wasn't exactly sure what kind of door I was doing. So I didn't build anything. It's not, it's not gonna be a structural header. It's just gonna be a closing in for the doorway. So once I figure out what door I'm using, I'll try to frame for that. But you guys get the picture. You can see what's happening now. Okay, last night I did some work without you guys and uh, I just got this wood up here. Uh, it might not look the neatest, but basically I framed in my doorway. I think today I'm gonna keep working on this wall over here, replacing the studs. I'm removing the old studs and replacing them with new studs. I don't know if this is a tip, but I wanted to talk about this. If you need a blade for a reciprocating saw, you might be tempted to buy a short blade. You'd say, why do I need a big one? I'm just doing this small work. You know, you're going through small layers, but I really like buying long blades, even for cutting small things because they're so flexible, literally flexible. And that helps me because you can get your saw into places that you wouldn't normally be able to. You might not realize how much you can bend this blade while you cut. And you can't do that with a small blade. Let me show you. When I want to cut the nails behind the stud, sometimes, I mean, these saws are long and you can't always get them between the stud bays. By getting the long blades, I'm able to bend it behind there. And I just push it right against there and I cut like that. Now I like having a short blade too. Short blades are good if you want to have a more precise cut because they're more stiff. They're not going to wander as much as these do. Just like that.
I've come to the tricky spot. I hope it goes smoothly, but we have a lot of wood bracing in the wall. We have all this stuff, but the main problem is this is our bathroom. And this is the bathroom where we take showers and use the toilet. So we don't want to mess this up. This has to stay intact. We are not ready to disable that bathroom yet. So I'm going to keep working though and trying to remove these studs without messing up anything here. Big accomplishment. We got all the studs replaced in the wall. It's all ready for sheathing. I have my first piece leaning up right here. We're gonna get it on. Just wanted to show you before it went up. It wasn't too bad, but it was a little bit tricky to get the studs off the tub. Uh, we had to cut the screws that the tub was hooked to the studs and the bathroom is intact. That's all that matters. And we got a new wall. So good. We're gonna get this sheathed up. Now something that we forgot to address in our previous videos and came up a few times is insulation. A lot of people are saying that we should insulate before putting the walls up because it's, it's open. Why aren't you insulating the house? We will be adding insulation to these walls. But the reason we're not doing it yet is because we're gonna wait and do it from the inside. All of this wood, remember I cut the studs, I cut all the nails here. So this wood, is floating only held on by corner trim and gravity so gravity is that a thing no it's just so, easier so i will be removing those and i'll be insulating from the back side and putting the wall back up and patching up that window that was here and it is easier for us because i'll have this firm sheathing to push the insulation up against and just do it properly so that's why i'm doing it that way Let's get the shims under here. Watch out for the wire closer. I'm glad that wall is finally done. Got all the plywood nailed up. Now we're ready to start working on the floor again. So close, but yet so far, we just ran out. So I probably have another six or seven feet to do here, and I don't have any more. So I'll have to run to the store to finish this up, but progress was made. We have our walls framed for our laundry area. We have the screen started. We got our wall closed in. It feels really good, really good. I actually just got a whole box of plumbing supplies to get started on the washing machine hookup. So we're gonna be getting that all plumbed up very soon. Now we don't own a dryer. We don't plan on buying a dryer. 
So we thought of just making a stackable location. So we'll put a dryer outlet and all that above the washer and leave room for it. That way, if we ever wanted a dryer, there's a place for it, but we don't have to take up five feet of space for a dryer that we don't have. We only need 30 inches of space. But before we even get to that, we got to get this floor finished. And we did run to the store and we picked up a bunch of deck boards so we could do that. I don't know why we didn't buy enough screen oversight on our part. I'm excited to get this rolling. Anyway, uh, I don't have anything else to share. We're at another standstill, but I will get to the store. I'll get that screen and we'll get this done soon. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, take care. I just broke the mic. I hope it sounds okay. Uh, sorry, that's the problem with working on a floor without a floor.